Hello student, this is biology lesson for grade 12. Lesson 3, the main content of this lesson. Lipid, we will see protein again. At the end of this lesson, student, you will be able to list and describe structure and the function of lipid and the protein. Student, do you remember what we have seen in our last lesson? Well, we have seen water and the carbohydrate. Nowadays, we are going to see lipid in the protein. Student, do you know what this lipid mean? How lipid can be differentiated from carbohydrate? What may be some advantage of lipid? Well, nearly all lipid can be made from element carbon, hydrogen, and that of oxygen, just like that of carbohydrates. But the proportion of oxygen here is less than that of carbohydrates. Lipid is insoluble in water, but it can be soluble in some nonpolar molecule like ether, like chloroform, and that of alcohol. Lipid is made from its respective monomer, fatty acid and alcohol, but it is not a polymer but micromolecule. Because it is building block is not similar. Lipid are triglyceride, which is formed when one glycerol and the three fatty acid molecule become sterified or bonded together. Phospholipid, which is formed when one glycerol, two fatty acid, and the phosphate group become sterified together. Else, waxes, which is made from that of fatty acid in that of long chain of alcohol, bonded together. Do you know where wax is found? Well, the lipid found on the surface of bird's feather. It is waxes. And the same type of lipid, which is unusual lipid, sphingolipid, which is a nitrogen-containing lipid, found in myelinches, found surrounding a nerve cell, is too lipid. So why we say nearly all? Because there is some nerve cell that contain lipid. There is a nitrogen element may be contained there. Well, let's see the structure of triglyceride. Triglyceride is an important lipid which is formed when one glycerol, alcohol part, and again three fatty acid, long chain of hydrocarbon, and acidic part become joined together. So here, there is carboxyl functional group is found here. There is three fatty acid that can be joined together by ester bond to form a triglyceride. Triglyceride is very important in releasing energy during the, the respiratory process. So it is considered as a respiratory substrate just like that of carbohydrates to release energy. Note on this one, it can act as, as a thermal insulation, temperature insulation. And adipose tissue that is found below the animal skin is very important for this activity. Another, it is very important in bouncy animal to become bounce in water. By reducing the density of animal, allow animal to become bounce on the surface of water. Another, it is very important in water proving purpose. Oil secreted on the surface of animal, feather or that of animal skin, prove as it is lipid or triglyceride. So, triglyceride serves this and that of this life function as an energy and again temperature regulation, bouncy activity, ensuring presence of lipid or not can be ensured here. It is very important. I told you that one important component of lipid is fatty acid, which is by covalently bonding of hydrocarbon, long chain of hydrocarbon covalently bonded together to form this functional structure, 
which you call carboxyl group. If you ask it, what is a functional group that lipid can be shared with another carbohydrate, especially protein is, they can share carb carboxyl group. This can dissociate into that of carboxyl and that of hydrogen ion, making this fatty acid is acidic solution. Fatty acid may be saturated, monounsaturated, and the polyunsaturated, based on the presence or absence of double bond. If fatty acid is totally long chain of hydrocarbon joined together by single bond, we call that saturated. No double bond presence. But here, if only one double bond found, we can say it is said to be monounsaturated. And again, if more than one double bond is found, we say it is said to be polyunsaturated. The presence of polyunsaturation in our membrane especially and in our daily diet is very important in determining cholesterol accumulation. It is very important. So including some poly polyunsaturated, just like that of margarine, that of eggs, is very important because they are a rich of polyunsaturated. Well done, student. Another very important type of lipid is phospholipid. Student, do you know what by means phospholipid mean? And how we relate phospholipid with this structure? Well done. Phospholipid as another lipid, especially triglyceride, it is made from that of two fatty acid, and they again one glycerol, and they again one sardiphosphate. Sardiphosphate. When they are joined together by special phosphodiester bond here. There is a linkage. One fatty acid removed here, and again the sardiphosphate become added. This makes phospholipid. Phospholipid become organized into two distinct regions. The one region is said to be hydrophilic region. It is considered as a water love heading region, which contain a phosphate part, a water loving part. It is a head section of a phospholipid, which can uh, water loving, considered as water loving. Again, it can be include a phosphate part here. Hydrophobic phobic region. This is a water heating region that contain a long chain of hydrocarbon tail that faces inward away from the water. This one is outward into the water, inward away from that water. Water heating hydrocarbon tail. Whereas hydrophobic is water loving phosphate head they are. This Dual hydrophobic, hydrophilic, natural phospholipid is very important in making membrane to become arranged in bilayer. So, phospholipid is the most important component of membrane bilayer. There is a hydrophobic region which contains hydrocarbon tile that move inwards away from the water, whereas there is hydrophilic head, a water-loving phosphate group that move outward into that of the water. This dual nature of phospholipid, hydrophilic hydrophobic phospholipid, is very important to make membrane to become arranged to that of bilayer. So phospholipid is the key for that of a membrane bilayer formation. Good. The another topic that we are going to see in this lesson is protein. Do you know how protein can be similar with that, the earlier lipid and again carbohydrates? Well, they share so many things together. And again, they may share so many functions together. When we say protein, protein is very important in the complex than that of the earlier. That include element carbon, hydrogen, and the oxygen. Additionally, nitrogen and the sulfur is present. And again, 
protein just like that of lipid, it is very important part of plasma membrane. For example, lipoprotein, transporter protein, carrier protein, channel protein, they are a part of protein that found in membrane. Notice this one. Protein is very important in enzyme catalytic activity because enzymes are made from that of a globular or ball like protein. Another, protein is very important in transportation of materials through the cell. For example, hemoglobin is very important part of uh, which is to transport oxygen across the blood. Another, protein is very important in immune system when antibody become recognized antigen recognition of antigen and antibody each other which is a protein again protein is very important as a part of chromosome when dna histone protein complex to form a chromosome here and again protein is very important as a chemical messenger molecule where the hormone that is found in living organism is very important in recognition and again in recepting to certain part to have certain function in transmitting of message neurotransmitter special chemical messenger hormone so protein is too complex with a diverse function for the life it is better to remember what the function protein can be served for the life so well done Protein, as the earlier carbohydrates, it is made from that of two functional groups. We say that monosaccharides are made from that of two functional groups, aldose and that of ketose part. Whereas these two made from that of two functional groups again. There is a basic functional group, amino parts. And again, acidic functional group, carboxyl parts. I told you before, as lipid contain fatty acid which is a carboxyl part acidic so lipid in the protein share together carboxyl functional group protein as another micromolecules or that of a polymer it is made from that of amino acid a smaller building block called amino acid when they are joined together by special condensation reaction called peptide bond there is a peptide bond linkage to form a protein here there is water releasing here water can be released during the process this is takes place when hydrogen atom lost from that of the amine group here and again oh group lost from that of carboxyl group releasing water in the forming amino acid when so many amino acid become joined together joined by that of a peptide bond they can form is polypeptide a bond a union of many peptide bond that contain amino acid can form is peptide polypeptide so protein is made from that of 20 amino acids so well amino acid have it is own basic structure all 20 amino acids that is found in living organism, they have the same basic structure. That all structure become attached around the alpha carbon. These are hydrogen atom. These are carboxyl group. These are amine part. And they again are functional group or are side chain. Student, do you know what is the importance of this are side chain in amino acid? Good. Each 20 amino acid have their own unique aricide chain, which means very important in determining the property of all amino acid, whether they are acidic part, whether they are basic part, whether they are nonpolar, 
whether they are polar soluble in water and the insoluble can be determined by this side chain side chain is very important so each two any amino acid have their own side unique side chain so remember this four parts are that come together to form amino acid structure. Good. Protein can have about four main levels. These four main levels can be started from that of primary structure. When we say primary structure, it is simple in that of long linear chain of amino acid that can be joined together by peptide bond here. We call primary structure of amino acid is, it is amino acid sequence by itself. When they are linearly linked together by peptide bond. There is a peptide linkage here. Peptide. Peptide bond linkage together. Here, each 20 amino acid in human body can be arranged in different way that determine what type of structure in the function each protein have. And again, what is the position in the type of amino acid in polypeptide chain are? Is determined by amino acid sequence. Where this amino acid sequence in the cell can be determined by the gene. It is determined the gene. This gene that are uh, uh, a part of nucleotide, a sequence of bases can be determined the structure. Structures that in the function they can be performed. And the position is the type of amino acid in polypeptide chain can be determined by the sequence of this gene. Well then, student. So, for example, this is amino acid sequence, which is called a primary structure. A primary structure of amino acid here. For example, insulin, which have about 51 amino acid sequence secondary structure. Student, do you know how secondary structure form it? Well, secondary structure of amino acid form it. When the primary structure, amino acid sequence become bonded together by this bond between the carboxyl acidic part and the amino group or basic part, they form this secondary structure. This bonding may be when they become tended to pull towards in coil manner, they can form alpha helix. A protein that is found in hair and another body structure. And again, if they can be linked in parallel manner together, they can form a sheet or that of plated manner, which is said to be beta plated sheet. So, a protein found in our nail a protein that is found in our hair, and a protein that is found in a horn, a protein that is found in a feather, are some part of secondary structure. This contain, if they are arranged in plated manner or parallel arrangement, they form peptide sheets. If they are tended toward this form, hydrogen bond become tended together in cold manner, they can form this alpha helix. So, alpha helix in the beta plate are the two most important examples of secondary structure of amino acid, tertiary structure. Tertiary at its, at its name indicates when secondary structure become folded together, further folding of secondary structure become make tertiary structure. It gives unique three-dimensional shape for that of protein to perform specific function here. Unique three dimensional, unique three D, unique three dimensional structure can be found here. As a result, they can capable to perform a specific function. This is because of tertiary structure. For example, enzyme are specific. Enzyme which is a globular protein are specific to catalyze specific chemical reaction. As a result of this one. The shape of or 3D of their active site enables them to become bind to that of a specific substrate only. Enzyme catalytic activity to catalyze specific chemical reaction because of the shape of their active sites. 
good student. Another, a hormone or a messenger is targeted to receive to that, to that of certain specific messenger because of their structure too. They can receive to that of a specific a hormone that's found on the membrane can be targeted to that of a specific messenger only. Antibody can be targeted to that of a specific antigen. They can recognize, they can differentiate an antigen, a specific antigen only in immune system. In body defense system, they can capable to identify or recognize a specific antigen only. These three examples are the most important example of tertiary structures. So when secondary structure become folded together, they form a tertiary structure, which is very important with that of 3D or three-dimensional shape to give specific function. Student, I told you that primary structure, which is amino acid sequence, joined together by peptide bond. Secondary structure by hydrogen bond, where tertiary structure can be joined by the following three main bond. There is hydrogen bond too, between a group of amino acids. And again, disulfide bond between a group that contain sulfur. Hydrogen bond may be found here. The one that is takes place between positively charged R group and that of negatively charged R group. There is hydrophobic interaction too. A reaction between that of hydrophobic R side chain too. So they have specific bond that they can hold them together. The final, most complex, and the further folding of the earlier protein become forms this quaternary structure. Is most complex than that of the earlier type of protein structure. This means formed when two or more polypeptide chain of the same amino acid subunit joined together to form a functional group to form a functional protein here. So this is a bit complex than that of the earlier. For example, hemoglobin, which is an oxygen-carrying pigment in red blood cell, which is made of two alpha subunits and the two beta subunits. Collagen, which is very important quaternary structure, which is found in tissue of many mammal, is some example of quaternary structure. Too. Not only this one. Based on their molecular structure, amino acid can be classified into two main parts. These are fibrous protein, which have a long fiber stru like structure. It resembles tertiary structure with a fiber. There is a fiber-like structure. For example, collagen in animal tissue. And again, keratin. And again, the else part of amino acid based on their molecular shape or structure is globular protein, which resembles tertiary structure, having a ball-like structure, global or that of ball-like structure. For example, enzyme, which is 3D structure, receptor protein, which is hormone, is also a ball-like structure. So, student, generally, in this lesson, we have seen lipid and the some part of lipid with their specific function. And again, we have seen protein, component, its function the functional group. And again, we have seen some structure of pro protein, like primary structure, which is amino acid sequence held by a peptide bond, secondary structure, which is joined together by hydrogen bond, tertiary structure, and the quaternary structure. And again, we have seen protein to be classified as fibrous protein, and again, globular protein based on their molecular structure. In our coming lesson, we will see enzyme. For now,
This is all about this today's lesson.